This week on the podcast for all ages comics, Panthers, Mice, Trolls, Plants, Zombies, Marvel, Looney, and much more. Hey, hey, and welcome to Daddy Mojo. It's the podcast where we'll talk about parenting, all age comic books, toys, and more. Now, here's your host, Trey Burley. Thanks for checking out the podcast this week for All Ages Comics, the week of February 14th, 2018, Valentine's Day, and there's lots to love. Yeah, that was my cheesy X-Radio side. Going deep for that one. Hey, it's Trey. How are you? If you'd be so kind as to leave a rating on the podcast server that brought you here, Podcaster, Stitcher, iTunes, whatever, share it with a friend. We sure would appreciate it. There's so much happening this week. In comics, especially those comics that are going to be great for young readers. And this is one of those weeks that the other weeks have been building to because there haven't been a lot of the go-to titles out for a couple of weeks. So this is probably that week, every three or four weeks, where there really is something for every young reader. We're talking readers as young as five years old. That's right. When our kids were maybe, I guess when they were as young as three we used to read comic books to them. And obviously they were all age appropriate, and there's some of the stuff we're going to talk about here. But some of those they still read today, like Scooby-Doo. Man, our, both of our children still love Scooby-Doo. And to that point, this week, one of the classic titles, Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? That comes out this week. This title is great. Issue number 90 from uh, DC Comics. It's out this week, and in this one, the uh, Mystery Gang... Meet the Spin Dry Spectre. Wow. It's only two ninety nine. also. So for you parents who are price sensitive, I get it. And this is really the sweet spot of comics. You get something entertaining for two ninety nine that has 32 pages of all new action, all new humor. What is not to love? Troll Hunters. Are you watching this show on Netflix? It is is great, and it's got uh, Guillermo de Toro's fingerprints all over it. And But this is like uh, all-age Guillermo, because Guillermo, his, some of his stuff may not really be that friendly for kids. This, however, is great. For ages, I'll say even six and up on the show, great animated show that's happening over on Netflix I mention that because this week has a graphic novel. It's a brand new graphic novel from Dark Horse. And this is going to be great for ages 8 and up. It's 72 pages, all new art with stories that originated in Arcadia. Arcadia, of course, being the place where Jim lives, as opposed to the power band from the 80s. Arcadia, yeah! You moms and dads remember that group. Um, This graphic novel, it, it kind of questions, why is it there a monthly comic book for troll hunters it would really lend itself so well to something on a monthly series as the animated show on netflix kind of says this has a very great narrative even without the stellar vocal talents from everybody involved on the show on netflix this story is great it's got legs and it would uh, certainly withstand a monthly comic book i think but in the meantime check out this new graphic novel if you're down with arcadia and this great series Check out Troll Hunters, Tales of Arcadia. It's brand new stories out. It's a graphic novel. It'll retail for just under $11. Buy it through the links. And it's just under $9. Another graphic novel, and I don't mean to harp on graphic novels, but both of these are great examples of series that lend themselves very well to this medium, and it helps people kind of cross over to graphic novels because some people, and understandably so, they, they may not be down with graphic novels because of the price point. When you figure, well, this is going to cost me 8 to $12, do I really want to spend that much money on it? When you consider the quality in what goes in the previous graphic novel as well as this graphic novel, I think the answer is a big old fat yes. It's Plants vs. Zombies. This is Volume 9, The Greatest Show Unearthed. Do you like that tongue-in-cheek, The Greatest Show Unearthed? And, of course, on the title, you've got Zomboss with a five-ring circus of anarchy, plants, zombies, and madness. Uh, Do you have an elementary school kid who may be in second grade or up? If so, 
they most likely love Plants and uh, Plants vs. Zombies because it is a great title. It used to be a monthly series from Dark Horse. They ixnayed that, and uh, one of the creators, Paul Tobin, said, you know what, we're not going to do a monthly thing, but we are going to put out these cool graphic novels on a somewhat regular basis. The promise has been kept, and this is the second original graphic novel since the comic book ended. Fabulous. Fabulous series. Any kid... Yeah, I'll see, let me look at my ages. Any kid, eight and up, will like this, as will the parents. This is one of those true kind of crossover multi-generational titles that really says all ages. And the fact that, sure, you eight-year-old kids, you're going to love this, but when you're not looking, your parents are going to like this comic book also, this graphic novel. Your older brother, your older sister, they're going to like it. And that's another thing that's really unique and great about Plants vs. Zombies is that it really is great for boys or girls. And we'll kind of give you the lowdown skinny here at the podcast. We'll say, you know what, this is more for girls, more for boys. This one, though, splits it right down the center, 50-50. Boys like it, girls like it. Great stuff, and the same goes for the comic book, too. If you pick up any of the old comic books, great one. It's a new graphic novel, Plants vs. Zombies. This is Volume 9, The Greatest Show Unearthed. Love that pun, and you will love this graphic novel. Another series that could really benefit from an, a, a steady, ongoing monthly comic is this one, Goosebumps, Monsters at Midnight. This one concludes the three-issue miniseries from IDW Publishing. And heretofore, Goosebumps has been, I think, on Scholastic with the occasional short-form original chapter book, kind of an early reader chapter book. Great. Those are those are really great early reader chapter books. They really are nice. However, in I think akin to the way Universe Universal was trying to build their Monsters universe, uh, the cinematic Monsters universe, Goosebumps could almost certainly withstand multiple publishing levels. I mean, you could have the, the early chapter reading books from, from Scholastic. You could also have a monthly comic book from IDW Publishing, because kids can kids want and kids need a good little dose of healthy scares or a good little case of healthy zombies or healthy all-age appropriateness goofs. And this is funny, scary for kids, all-age scares. That's a great way to put that. And that, you know what, our six-year-old has read the Goosebumps miniseries. He wrote issues one and two. He wasn't scared. He was genuinely entertained. Although there are monsters in it that have some... uh, They don't have real-world implications because they're goofy monsters, but they're scary enough for a six-year-old to have some sort of peril in their mind. Make it a monthly series, and I think the fans would respond. If not, check out this uh, this finale to the miniseries. Issue 3 of 3 out this week. Goosebumps, Monsters at Midnight on uh, IDW Publishing. Black Panther is coming out this week to movie theaters. Really look forward to seeing this. I don't know if it's going to be great for all ages. I don't even know what ages it's going to be. It's PG-13 as a film. So we're going to check it out and and give you kind of a, a who, what, when, when, what, when, where, why, what ages would it be good for and such. However... This comic book is going to be great for ages 8 and up. If you're down with the more realistic Marvel, Marvel Comics Digest, uh, issue number 5. This is the Avengers with Black Panther. And this Digest situation from Archie Comics is a great way for younger kids to get hip on some of the, the cooler Marvel Comics titles. Difference being, the Digest, it's that it's the square format that is usually associated with Archie Comics in the supermarket checkout lines. Can you visualize what I'm talking about now? That's what they've got here, except they're putting some of the Marvel Comics superheroes in this line by Archie. But this is the real Marvel deal. This is not an Archie imprint. So you're talking the real Avengers in that format that has heretofore been owned and associated with Archie Comics. Issue number five from this very successful Digest format, it's out this week with 
Black Panther joining the fray. Pretty cool. I think you'll like it. Plus, these are, if you're down with the collecting side of comics, this is it. It's a one and done. It's not a monthly thing. So if you want to try something neat, fun, semi-collectible, check this out. Or if you just want to get somewhat familiar with Black Panther, or if you're very familiar with Marvel Comics and want some cool stories, check it out. Marvel Comics Digest, issue number five, The Avengers with Black Panther. Over in the other major publishing house, you've got this one from DC Comics. We checked out issue number one of this one, a very unlikely team-up that worked. The Legion of Superheroes with Bugs Bunny. I rolled my eyes too, but I checked it out, and I loved it. It was a great one-off, but at the same time, they also had Lobo meets Roadrunner, Batman meets Elmer Fudd, Wonder Woman meets the Tasmanian Devil, and Jonah Hex meets Yosemite Sam. They were all one-offs. We looked, well, we, we glanced through the others. We only purchased one of them, but they were all really great, and hold your breath for it. It was really believable. Eh, I know. You kind of grin when you say it. I grin when I just said that. But they were all wickedly entertaining in the way that they managed to bring the Warner Brothers cartoon characters into the universe of DC. Great stuff. And this is now collected as a trade paperback. Buy this one through the links. Because if you buy the links, it's only $16. Buy it retail, it's $20. It's $20. Each one of these, very, very entertaining. What ages will it be good for? It's going to be a little bit too much for our six-year-old just because of the reading. However, a 10-year-old, great stuff for them. I wouldn't even hesitate to get this for an eight-year-old if they really like some superheroes. Plus, as I've mentioned a couple of times, our kids are really down with the Looney, Bro- the Looney Tunes comic books. They love those. So when you mention the mashup, the unlikely but successful mashup between the Looney Tunes universe and the DC superheroes, and it's drawn in a realistic superhero way without the violence that prohibits some parents from saying, you know what, buy the Batman series. I understand why you don't want nine-year-olds buying the regular Batman series, because it's not really appropriate for nine-year-olds. However, this is Batman that, uh, it's realistically drawn Batman, that a nine-year-old will love and parents won't mind. It's great. It's DC meets Looney Tunes. It's a trade paperback, and it's from DC Comics, and the cat's involved with this. Tom King, Lee Weeks, great stuff. Highly recommend it. We mentioned earlier in the podcast that one of the go-to comics was out this week. Another one of the go-to comics. You can pick up every issue of this comic book, and it's great. SpongeBob Comics, issue number 77. It's out this week. There's not really much I can say about this other than pick up any issue, and it's great. SpongeBob Comics, issue 77. Um, Everyone involved with this is great. That's all I can say. Just don't believe me. Pick it up in the comic book store, glance through it, and you'll love it. I guarantee it. Regular show... 2018 special. This is issue number one, and it's a one-off thing. But this is kind of like one of those seasonal comic books that Boom Studios does really well, like maybe a Valentine's Day special or a Christmas special or something like that. This is just a special about the regular show. And what is great about this is that the regular show stopped their monthly comic a while ago. And similar to Plants vs. Zombies, except they're not going the original graphic novel way. Regular show may be just keeping it kind of as a seasonal or a biannual or an annual special kind of thing, because the characters are great. Mordecai and Rigby, great characters. We love this. We like this show better than Adventure Time as a show, even as a comic book. We preferred this comic book to the much more popular Adventure Time. I think you'll like this. It's regular show. The 2018 special, it's from Boom Studios. It costs a little bit more, but it's thick. It's very thick, and you get a lot of bang for the buck. Retails for $8. Buy it through the links, and it just costs under two, under, under 650 
So it's pretty affordable. We are also on Twitter. Would you like to follow us? We sure would be thankful. We've got some cool giveaways. We're giving away a copy of Daddy's Home 2 over on the YouTube channel, as well as a couple DVDs coming up in the very near future. So also subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. Just do a quick search for uh, daddymojo.net or go to the website and look for the links through that. Thanks for listening to Daddy Mojo. Be sure to tune in next time. For more information on any of the things we talked about today, just check out the website, daddymojo.net, or hit us up at Daddy Mojo on social media.